the next part of this, the future of sync, is going to be dedicated to uh, the uh, colleague of yours. Is it from Catalog? They're um, colleagues or? We are, we are partners. You're partners, yeah. okay. So let's welcome, oh, where, where have I got my notes? Uh, Frederick Schindler, from, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Catalog, which is uh, an initiative of Too Young Limited. Uh, they, this, this is a special um, presentation talking about how you can have human curation working closely with an artificial intelligence. Is that correct, Frederick? Uh, that's overall correct. I, I, will, I will go a little bit more into Yeah, a little bit deeper. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Catalog is a pioneering platform in music supervision, and it's a marketplace for licensing and, and syncs. Uh, they work with some of the best labels and artists uh, working under a digital umbrella. And they're kind of reinventing the experience of licensing music for commercial purposes. El carácter de la idea del showroom de ideas es que vamos un poco rapidito así para dar una breve introducción a estos proyectos. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Welcome, Frederick Schindler uh, from uh, Too Young Limited, presenting Catalog. Well, thanks, so, thanks very much for having me today. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm a music supervisor. I've been doing supervision for the last 20 years. We have a leading agency called Too Young Limited. We specialize in um, advertisement, but mainly for fashion, luxury, beauty brands. So the top tier of, uh, of advertisement, I would say. We also do uh, independent cinema, uh, film and TV. Uh, and Catalog uh, is an initiative we started more or less four years ago um, as a response to a reality we were seeing in our actual practice as music supervisors. So I will give you a little bit of context so you understand why we came out uh, with this initiative. Um, the market over the last decade completely drastically changed. So just to take some figures uh, from last year, um, we had more than 10,000 TV series being produced. If you Imagine that a series has at least 10 episodes. That's 100K episodes. If you have 25 songs per episode, well, that's a lot of music. Uh, there was 14,000 video games produced. It's more than 3,000 plus in a decade. Uh, and around 20,000 feature films. And I'm not counting all the digital arts, short snippets. So um, the issue with commercial music is that it's a process that is entirely manual. Um, so our um, aim, our mission, our desire is to contribute um, to help right holders, real artists, placing more relevant, bold, artist-crafted music in the audiovisual landscape. I will just run this video, which shows you quickly an overview of the platform, and then we go for a, um, <clears throat> a quick uh, tech demo on the main innovation that the, the platform brings to the table, which is a smart pricing algorithm. Welcome to Catalog, the end-to-end members-only music supervision platform. We connect the best labels and artists with top-tier brands and supervisors for film, TV and digital opportunities. Catalog has been programmed for all synchronization routes from worldwide TV ads to short digital campaigns. The platform empowers users by utilizing industry-leading technology. Find the perfect song using audio similarity. Check the full song metadata, a short bio about the artist and the lyrics. Catalog's proprietary smart pricing algorithm has been trained with thousands of real deals and processes millions of dynamic and static data points. It sets a real-time, granular and market-priced ballpark for any song under any scope. All songs will be available on a licensing mode called semi-manual. Licensees will make an initial offer based on a smart pricing ballpark. You then have up to five days to accept or decline the opportunity with the ability to submit two counter offers. Here, users have an overview of the songs they want to license, preview the license, delete songs and tweak the scope at every turn. 
If needed, export a quote before making the payment. Once the fee is agreed, simply proceed to the checkout. Do a final review and license the song. Download the license, invoice and cue sheet and receive everything over email. Catalogue. Shaping the sound of tomorrow's audiovisual culture. To kind of explain it just simply... Welcome uh, to Catalog. Is Catalog a bit like the Spotify of syncing? Well, uh, actually, no. Um, okay. Not at all. I mean, we, we are, I would say, uh, more like the rough trade east of sync. Okay. Um, actually, I think you know this is a better description. We we don't want all the music. We don't want uh, artists crafted music with, at the same time, uploaded with rain sounds or stock music or AI generated uh, music. We want a curated experience, the same that you have in a record shop that you trust. Uh, so that's I think the main difference. The second main difference is that Spotify is a tech company. Mm. We are a music company that is using tech to enable human creativity. Uh, I don't think that <clears throat> at the deep and the core of Spotify, they really, really care about artists. Yeah, uh, <laughs> honestly, it, it, it so. seems so. <laughs> I mean, how much revenue do you think commercial sync could represent for the music industry if, you um, know, if, it, if it's made this easier? Um, I think, I mean, currently the, the situation is quite um, um, Boring. I mean, um, sync represents 4% only on the recorded side of mm. the global music industry, and that's around 600 million, 650 million per year. And that's combining all the majors and the big indies. Uh, if you put publishing aside, we are talking about 1.25 more or less billion in global revenue. Well, that's, you know, um, not bad, but stock music reached uh, 1.3. So stock music, library music, royalty free music, free music is already making more money than the entire world of commercial music combined. Um, so that also means that the audience is listening to tons of library music, which is also something we want to uh, contribute changing. I mean, there is no reason uh, the only you know, biggest pain point for more commercial music being used in media is actually a very slow and complicated process. Uh, if we tackle that and we give content creators, uh, filmmakers, uh, brands an easier access for the lower tier, I would say, uh, shorter uh, needs like a background uh, song in a film, uh, um, a trailer or teaser uh, track, uh, a digital advertisement. I mean, all those millions and millions of cues uh, could be um, coming back in terms of revenue to the music industry. Um, let me just run quickly uh, a demo of the smart pricing. I'm just going to place here, this is a spin-off. I mean, this is not the actual uh, client-facing platform, but it shows you uh, the innovation that we bring to the table, which is actually one of the other big uh, you know, challenges for commercial sync, which is pricing, because you know, there are so many variables in a sync deal the term, the territories, uh, the brand or the production type. Um, and what we came up with is basically, this is a, what we call the sync track ID. So you can basically produce um, <clears throat> a photo with um, all the master metadata, with the publishing metadata, this is dynamic. You contextualize the artist. This is very useful for a music supervisor or filmmaker when you pitch music. You have press quotes, you have an overview of the audience. Uh, and you have some socials. I mean, what's important for us is to show the client and explain the client that they're not buying 30 seconds of audio, but you know, they are actually licensing a piece of art that has a real audience, that has a craft, there's a human being with a story or a band with a story in the background. So this, this, this educational part, I think will be quite a challenge in the next years. Uh, and that also explains why this will be more expensive than licensing stock music even if the experience would be as convenient. Um, then, yeah, this is, this is designed for the right holder. This is a tool that we designed for our partners. So let's say this is a one-stop and then, you know, you can go uh, and select advertisement. So this is a makeup for, let's say, uh, my cosmetics. Uh, the supervision is too young. 
Um, and the origin is the United States. Uh, then we will have a digital campaign with point of sale. So this standardizes the scope. It just speed ups also a lot. I want 12 months. And then I want a worldwide license because this is a digital ad. It's one 45 seconds ad, which is um, with branded content. Uh, and then the right holder, we say, hey, I want 40,000 all in for this. Uh, and what the platform does is basically calculate an AI generated ballpark. I mean, the issue we are having right now with our um, algorithm is that it's, it's pricing too high, uh, which is a good problem. But uh, <laughs> is, is <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the overview. This is the core technology. Uh, then we have, you know, um, you have provide feedback. Uh, but again, this is a tool that uh, is not what the supervisors will use. It's a spin off of the innovation. This is something we are actually providing our partner labels so they can track the sync activity and we work together towards the launch of the platform refining the, the crucial aspect of it, which is actually having some automation on the, at least an indicative ballpark estimate pricing for any kind of need. And do, do you also work on bulk deals, say like an application like VideoLeap that is for v editing videos for social media on your phone, right? They have their bank of, you know, uh, songs that don't have licenses or whatever. I imagine they, no? Uh, they we, we, we only work with commercial music. Uh, what the, the angle of the platform is, I mean, we, we accept the complexity. We accept the, you know, the nature of copyright. We don't want to change that. We believe that artists and right holders should retain the right to have consent on the way the music and creation is used. That's not the problem per se. So what we do is uh, we partner with, with you know, a selection of um, initial, like we call them founding partners. So those are labels and publishers that we have a close relationship, a long-standing uh, you know, history of common you know, successes, placements through to young. Um, that's already a very vast catalog. I mean, it includes, I mean, I cannot disclose too much, but, you know, very relevant and interesting imprints such as Compact or Partisan Records, uh, DFA. Well, uh, those are a few of the, of the headliners, I would say. Mm. Um, and what we do is actually connect the different stakeholders in the background. So the client has this one-stop experience when licensing. Um, he can make an offer, receive a unified answer from all the stakeholders so they don't have to go into these fragmented conversations. So oh, I'm missing 5% of the publishing, one email. So we raise all those like back and forth. Um, and the, the, the big change is like, you know, they get an estimate, they can make an offer and they receive a, you know, unified reply when they want to license. It's just one invoice, one um, consolidated uh, license as well. So it trimmed down a lot also the execution part of you know, commercial music licensing, which is another huge pain point. Mm. Um, this is not intended for big, big uh, hits. That's not a problem in commercial music licensing nowadays. I mean, what we were trying to solve is indeed all this long tail. I mean, the millions of cues, like, you know, that can be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 euros, which, you know, I mean, for independent artists, I mean, it, it's, it's quite a relevant amount of money. Uh, before making 5,000 euros, I mean, on Spotify, well, you need a few bunch of million streams. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think that, you know, um, um, this type of initiative uh, catalog could contribute to increase the quality, the musical quality uh, of the audiovisual production overall. I mean, there's no reason why scrolling down your feed or watching a Netflix documentary with all the available great music that we have, that people need to listen to stock or AI generated music. Um, that's, that's, that's a fact. Uh, so, so I think that we have very interesting, um, you know, years ahead. Uh, and it's a very good moment also for the music industry. I mean, the independent sector is suffering from low payouts. I mean, you know, small venues are also suffering. So I think, you know, untapping the potential of sync uh, for the indie community would be a big challenge over the next years and I think we have you know we have amazing music to to place in our global audiovisual culture I mean it's an interesting horizon because I don't know if it's coinciding with post pandemic but everybody really became there's many more video content creators now 
and everybody wants to put music on and and it's it's i can see that it's something that wasn't here 10 years ago you it, know? it wasn't but we, we are not moving yet into the content creators so influencers that have like even big big profile channels on youtube etc or TikTok. i mean we are focusing at, for the lounge on top tier audiovisual media so <clears throat> film documentaries um tv series advertisement um so you know the the this initiative is not intended to solve the global sync problem we we understand the very specific market and we bring a response to the needs of that market the clients we have conversations with um understand the value of music and you know we they are asking us and they are willing to license more commercial music but you know for, to give you an example i mean the, some of the luxury brands we work for are producing in between 100 and 300 pieces of content per year so that's a post a day almost a video with music so with that amount of content being produced and they want to support in the artists and they want to license they don't want to use, to use talk or bespoke i mean but the thing is like you know identifying um reaching out uh drafting contracts getting the files so it's it's too slow as per today so if we, if they could have a tool like this they would probably buy 300 tracks through a tool like this and maybe when from the 300 projects there will be a few that will have more iconic recognizable songs those ones will be you know handled manually uh, the the main goal here is to place more commercial music in quality content uh, for the content creators youtube etc this might come at the second phase i don't i don't think that's so much critical at the moment well, thank you very much, Frederick Schindler, for this presentation. Thank you. And for coming all the way to Barcelona to Tunara Pro. <laughs>